first of all, Kevin Gates is in this building, and the energy is very positive. Welcome. Welcome, Mr. Gates. And your beautiful dog. Children. Oh, your beautiful children. What is your name? Isla. Isla, you are so beautiful. What is your name? Gaza. You are absolutely gorgeous as well. Um, let me ask you something. I want to ask the children something first. How do you like touring with your dad? How do you like coming on the road with him? Me, personally, like, I love that. Like, that is my life. Hi, Miha, that's so beautiful. What about you? This is my manager. <laughs> oh, she's in like You're she the is. boss. <laughs> you're the boss. Yeah, well, she I already is. knew that. What about you? What do you feel when you're on the road? I like it. You like it? Do you get tired? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's unlike, a lot of work to be on the road. It really is. Realize. How do you get ready for a show? And more importantly, because off camera, we were kind of talking about energy. How do you wind down after all of that energy that you give away that, to the audience? That's a, that's a good answer. Um, You want the long answer or the short I want answer? The, I want the, want the, the Kevin Gates answer. Do you want getting ready? We getting ready and, and how you wind down. down after. All right. Getting ready for a concert is different for me because I only eat one meal a day. Oh, wow. So okay. they got something called a, a a purge, so to say, a digestive purge. And that's when I do like these four sets. Of, it's like a manual purge, so to say. It's, I don't take anything, but I got these certain core exercises I do. And I go clean out my whole digestive system because I operate better when I'm empty. I feel like you I like the, I don't like to I like mm. to be empty. And when I say empty, when we eat food, that's dense energy. It's just that's just dense energy in the body. So it lowers the frequency and the vibration because we are energy. Our bodies are electric. Wow. So I only eat once a day, but because I'm prepping for like a concert, I don't eat at all. Like, so that's interesting. So I didn't know that, but how many times did I tell you before an interview or anything, I don't eat. For some reason, I feel better. I did not know that, but I don't eat before I do any speaking engagements or anything like that. Anytime, anytime we do anything on the radio, I, won't I don't eat. eat. Your, your body goes through three different phases. It goes through ingestion, digestion, and then it goes through a cleansing phase. Like when you wake up in the morning, your tongue white, mm -hmm. your body don't need food because you already ate earlier that day. You know what I'm saying? You can use that energy and, you know, burn that all, let it off. I, like, I only eat when I'm hungry. A lot of times, I'm so full of love that I'm not even hungry. I can go two, three days and don't even eat anything because I'm full of love. Not the love that I get from my children, but the love that I pour into myself, such as committing acts of self-love. Not going to get my nails and my feet did, but, like, my chakra alignment mm -hmm. from my yoga, my meditation, my fitness, and the things that I do is is – all condensed into one thing. I don't know if you knew this or not, but I'm Mexican, which means I'm part Native American. Mexicana. So I'm Mexicana. And when the Spanish came here, our ancestors didn't eat three meals a day. They ate when they were hungry. Only right. when they were hungry. So maybe you're getting in touch well, with the way we're supposed Kenya, to. Like we Tainos, uh -huh, like uh -huh. Indios. So I'm, I'm pretty familiar with the Native American You know, culture. you understand. Yeah. You understand. And and now, it, how do you wind down? How do you wind down? Because you're putting something all the energy. Called, they got something called theta, mm -hmm. where the brain enters theta. And they got a breathing technique, the Wim Hof breathing technique, but that energizes the body. When you want to wind all the way down, you're going to blow air, all of the air out of your body, and then you're going to inhale really, really slow for like four seconds, and then you're going to exhale for eight seconds. But if you can get to the point where you can inhale for maybe five seconds and exhale for 10 seconds and keep it like that, and you 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 command your heart to slow down, you slow your heart beat down. And what happens is theta is when the brain in, releases the gray matter. That's when the body really receives healing. That's when your body releases HGH, human growth hormone. You only experience those when you go into a deep, deep sleep. I need this. Most people don't even get deep, deep sleep because especially for women i hate to say this but I, I gotta say this for women first though because women are spiritual they can take liquid and turn it into human forms life. and physical in beings so they live in the intuitive world once a man and his masculinity becomes sacred he lives in the intuitive world our intuition and vision comes from being able to hunt we go in the woods for six, seven days. We instinctively know how to hunt and where to go. It's instinctively. Our intuition kicks in in that way. 
Well, what disrupts that is the inner, uh, electromagnetic pulsation from the phone. So mm -hmm. I sleep with my phones in a different room. I'll put them in airplane mode because it disrupts your melatonin cycles at nighttime. I'm not trying to sound like a nerd, but no, 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 no. no, 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 no let me tell you something. No, listen, I just moved my phone out my room when yeah, I go to sleep. So and it, and what? I've been on a like, like I hate to talk about this because so many women, when they talk to me about sexually related topics, when I speak about sex, it's spiritual in nature. So I talk about sex transmutation. I've been on a, like a five-year semen retention journey where I don't release at I, all. I've, and, I've read about that. I've talked about once it. Once you get to the point where you don't release, you can experience intimacy without sex. It's like it's parts of your partner that become more beautiful and like the you try like that? looking into their eyes and mm -hmm. don't just go yeah, cold yeah, turkey. Yeah. I say like you start like once every Friday. Then go every other Friday. Then you you grab just a gradual process. You work up to that. You don't feel like aggressive. You don't feel like a like you don't like at first. <laughs> He's like yeah, of course. Yeah. I feel like a monster. Yeah. But you know what but I do with that? that, that you know that energy. Up, I yeah. take that energy and I put it toward making music. I put it toward going to the gym and working out. I don't. What what, what got me away from uh, masturbation was a man told me, you know, you committing a coward is that? I say how? He said because you snuck and did it. He said, that's a coward as that. He said, go stand outside and do it in front of everybody. I said, ah, do it. I don't care. He said, nah, I'm nah. serious, though. Anybody you, ever caught you, you doing that? You, you wouldn't do that. You would be embarrassed if you was to get exactly. caught doing that. Exactly. Because it's a coward as that. But, and that's what made me say, if it ain't rough, it ain't us. Anything that I get, I want to earn it. I don't get up in the morning and go eat. I want to earn my meal. I want to put in the work. My children know. I tell them, look, I love y'all babies. I'm about to go to the gym. If y'all need me, call me. But I got to commit these acts of self-love and raise my vibration so I can better serve them and better serve humanity. But when I would do interviews and talk about semen retention and spiritual unification, because I hate the word sex, because it's very spiritual. Like, yeah. you pass on past traumatic experiences and everything. But people want to turn it into something else and turn it but, into and a every sound interview bite I do, and into And every something. interview I do, they only show, like, one little click part of it, like, for clickbait. But then when you go look at the interview, they'll be like, Man, oh. dude, yeah, oh, okay. And but the way, sorry, the way you explain that, that's why I asked that, because when we leave here, I can't go to sleep. Like, I, I'm like. You can't go to sleep because you don't turn your brain off. Exactly. And he'll like, you know, he'll. I smoke a little something. He'll, you know, and, and relax and settle down. Like what, like we, yeah, the Santa Maria spirit. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with it because. I've also like been a marijuana connoisseur at one time in my life, but our bodies have receptors. I can achieve any level that I want to achieve just through breathing and affirmation. Okay, I command my body to do what I wanted to do. Well, I'm gonna ask I command you. my body to go to sleep and have a great rest and wake up and supercharge. If I take a 30 minute nap, I set the intention. On this holy divine day out here, I set the intention to take a 30 minute nap or a 20 minute nap and my body's gonna I mean, completely heal itself. breathing from? Um, martial arts. Oh, well, you want me to go all the way back? Yeah, go, yeah, yeah. go back. Tell us. I'm, I got, I've been really big into martial arts my whole life because I was sexually victimized when I was a child. Mm -hmm. And not to be triggering toward anybody, yeah. but that's part of the that's journey. Happened, yeah. Right, right. I talked about it on the Mike Tyson interview. And I've been taking martial arts. Like, as soon as I finish with one, I go to the next one, on to the next. And I had this drive, this competitive drive to just be this conqueror and be a protector of women and children. I'm just overprotective. But I was operating out of fear. Because of what you experienced. Because of my past traumatic That's experience. Right. I right. never had healed from that. So one thing that one of my sensei showed me, he said, listen, this is what we about to do. He said, you didn't you didn't pass every test I gave you. Wow. Now I'm about to, this going to be the worst test ever. He blindfolded me and laid me on the floor. He said, now, nah, just lay on your back and wait for me to come attack you. He oh, said, it's gosh. a lot of us here. You just wait. And I waited and waited, and I was so tense, and I waited and waited. Then I finally said, man, fuck it, I surrender. And that was the lesson he was teaching me, to surrender. Mm -hmm. That was the hardest thing I ever had to learn how to do. So once I learned how to surrender, that's when I could say, you know what? Hmm. Did you hmm. feel like you healed at that moment? Did you feel different? No, healing is a dance. Yeah, You never truly heal. I'm glad I didn't just heal all at once. If it was a magic pill that I could take to heal, I wouldn't want it because adversity is what built character. Mm -hmm. Like having my heart broke was the best thing that ever happened to me. It turned me into something I never thought I could become. 
I was codependent on a relationship because of the abandonment issues I had with my mother. Once I went back and healed the relationship with my mother, and I told her, you know what, I'm grateful for you. Thank you. Like, thank you. That's you the gave toughest me life. thing to do, though. It's the toughest thing to do. I, I, I went through that myself. I tell people now that I used to dread my family. Now I love to be around my family for a long time. I blamed them for, for whatever. But that journey brought me here, and I would not change a thing. Because I, I ain't going to say I, I love to be I around am. them because I'm, my frequency is super high. Mm-hmm. And well, like I, I like ha- to be around them in short spurts, but I do. I, I could, do I like could, to be I around them. I could exchange them. energy with them in a loving way, but I'm still a great teacher. And because I'm a great teacher, I can't just sit around and spend time with my students. And these are my two teachers because they didn't come in the world knowing everything. They had to feel their way through the world. And I learned how to feel my way through the world and Don't explore you love their wonder, through them. Their excitement about everything. But That's they was I, never they was never wrong about nothing. Like they was never wrong about saying, I saw something in the closet or I saw something over here. They operate in a dimension outside of us because they vibrate at a higher frequency. And I had a conversation with my mother on the phone today. I'm like, she's like, how's the weather where you at? I'm like, the, it's the weather based on my emotions. And I noticed that the conversation started going left a little bit, and I had to realize I'm vibrating at a different frequency because mm-hmm. our emotions she doesn't understand are connected with the universe. The the earth is the our our mother. She was here before. She'll be here way after we leave. Like we are, everything is connected. Everything is one. I hate to sound like a tree hugger or a hippie. No, but I mean, why exactly. would you hate you, to sound like that? Yeah. You do you with Ramdas or no? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Do he has you, a book do you, be here now. It's I know. I I didn't I didn't been super super sad and it started raining. Yeah. And it's cl- the rain is a beautiful thing because it's cleansing, it's forgiveness, it's the mercy of the Creator, it's the mercy of God. Everything is connected. Like the, I'll tell you something right now. People gonna think I'm weird. This is my first time ever speaking on this. I don't know why. Just where the energy going right now. I was accidentally went that one of the homes that I have right now that they love to death. I I was house shopping. I accidentally went to the wrong neighborhood, but it was really the right neighborhood. But I told him, I said, yeah, this is the address I'm trying to get to. He said, that address isn't back here. I said, I'm going to move in this neighborhood. He said, I hope you do. I love your music, but there's no houses for sale back here. I said, I'm going to move in this neighborhood. He said, I hope you do. (laughs) So I pulled off. I went and looked at the other house. I told the realtor, hey, look in that neighborhood. And see, he said, I just took a house off the market. Now, I had looked at houses for like two, three months. Yeah, yeah. Nothing was what I wanted. When I got to this house, it was everything I needed. I went to the backyard. <sighs> I hate to even say this. I took my shoes off <laughs> and I like bare feet and I got in the ground. I ground it and I wrapped my arms around the tree and I just prayed. And I was like, God, if you let me get this home. I'm going to use it as a healing center for me and my children, and I'm going to protect it, and I'm going to love it, and it'll always be yours and ours together. And I got the house. That's wild. Man, that's a beautiful story. And I hate this. I like. I know that's going to sound weird. No, too. It does it's my first time ever weird. saying this. In a, in a why question. do people think that you speaking your truth sounds weird? Because you think that you need to respect And the reason Earth, I respect put my hands on the tree or? when I prayed to the Creator, and I was I was talking to God, but I connected with the tree energetically because every tree all over the world, like under the earth, through the roots and the mycelium, are connected. Mm-hmm. Yep. They operate off an energetic field that. Your phones go out when you run around a tree. They operate at a different type of energy and frequency. And energy is my first language. Words, and that's primitive. Yeah, it's all been around. They communicate outside of our understanding. And if you look at how the elephants communicate all over the world, they put their trunks to the ground and communicate with each other all over the world. Their brains process things way different than our brains. Like, we haven't even scratched the surface with life. We think we know so much, but we know so little about life. But I think the key of what you said is that the earth is going to be here. People always say, oh, we're in trouble. The earth is in trouble. The earth's not in trouble. She's going to be here long after we aren't. How a woman, how a woman cleanses and how a woman gets her menses. Earth is going to the do earth the earth do the same thing. thing. She get she gets rid of anything parasitic That's in right. nature. She, be, she will get rid of it. Yeah. She being mother nature. <laughs> Huh? It's true. She being Mother Nature. Mother Nature. She, yes, it's true. Yeah, she yes, it was feminine. Yeah, agree. Speaking the, of feminine, the, the sun is the sun is masculine. The sun is the strict father. The earth is the holy divine feminine. 
the earth is the sacred masculine, the strict father. Mm. Speaking of strong women, uh, Yonsei with uh, Sexy Red. Now, I think us here, we're big Sexy Red proponents, Huge and we see the genius fans. in her. What is the genius that you recognized in Sexy Red that maybe the rest of the world isn't unaware of? She was um, she was authentically herself. She was unafraid to be, to live in her truth. And if you come from where I come from, like the inner city, impoverishment, poverty stricken, things of that nature, she's only a representation of what so many mothers go through and go and deal with every day. Like my baby dad in jail, why I'm pregnant. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I done left my woman out here while I was incarcerated. So I like my heart went out to I was like, yeah. man, that's there's something very that endearing dope. about her. Yeah, you dope. It's because she's real and she speaks she real. truth. Yeah. She real. Not a no wrong people ain't gonna respect it. They gonna look for flaws because whenever you got somebody that's a that's living with a facade, mm-hmm. they always see authenticity Oof. as a threat. Yeah. I don't see authenticity as a threat. I embrace it because anybody I look at, I'm able to see a different version of myself in them. Also, when I when I think of Sexy Red, for me personally, I'll just tell you as a woman who has a show, who gets criticized because I speak my mind the way I want, she raps about certain things that men have been rapping about for a very long time. And for some reason, people think that it's not okay that she has to behave differently because she's a woman. And I don't. That, for me, I, I don't. I don't, I don't judge, but, but, the reason it's like that is because when a woman is left unprotected, she has to exhibit masculine masculinity. For a woman to do business, she has to exhibit masculine energy. Feminine energy is not pussy or gay. Like most men, like be man, he feminine. That's pussy. Feminine energy is nurturing and caring, and that's one thing that I had to learn because exactly. I was big on the. I, you know I'm mm-hmm. tough all the mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. but if my daughter I always tell people this if my daughter was to fall down and scrape her leg I'm gonna pick her up and I'm gonna nurture her and tell her baby you alright if my son fall I'm gonna tell him hey get up you alright come on we men get up you alright mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm handle them different I'm gonna handle them different the masculine and the feminine is different he's gonna put law on but in that moment you are comforting her yeah, that's in nurturing. In that sense, that's a nurturing. That's like me giving exactly. myself a bath. That's me nurturing myself. Right. And that's something that a lot of times we don't do. We don't put that good energy back in ourselves. We look for it in others. I no longer look for anything that externally validate me. But at the same time, I know the difference between raising a man and raising a woman. Now, my woman not going to conduct herself like that because I'm going to provide a safe place for her to exhibit femininity. She not going to have to be tough. Because she got me. She got a man. You wrote something though on your Instagram. You're very fit right now. You know, you were up on stage doing your thing. You said that you were, you know, you had been, you were fat. You, you said a slob. You, you used certain terminology. Why did you get there? How did you turn things around? How do you feel now compared to that moment in your life? Compared to that moment? Because it was when interesting when I go back and I look at that. a lot of my, well, I just now forgave myself. I just now nah, like that's what the why the album is called Ceremony because mm-hmm. I'm learning that. to love the stranger that was once myself. I have learned to love the stranger that was once myself. But I used to look at those pictures and cringe like the fuck like I really used to be like that. And whenever I would walk in the room, I was so insecure that I would have to find a flaw in everybody in the room and extract it and make it bigger than life to make yourself so feel nobody better. could look at me. So nobody could see me. Mm-hmm. But it was a beautiful situation. People laugh, and I laugh at it now, too. When I had my shirt off at a video shoot, and I was holding a baby, and a baby tried to suck my titty, I couldn't hide. I had real breasts. Like, I couldn't hide. I was naked. And because I was naked, I needed that. When everybody laughed at me, I needed that. And that's what inspired me to turn everything around. On that note, do you think I don't have... Do you think I don't have breasts? Do I, Kev? Respect you have to take your shirt off and let me see. All right, going to happen. It's because I respect Kev's fitness jersey a lot. I just want to make sure that we get to the bottom of this. Let's see, Kev. No, you just got big nipples. <laughs> 
I think you he's a comedian. I yeah. think you should do that at well, every show. Here, here's what I'm thinking. No, Kevin. I had breasts. Like, okay, so these ain't breasts. Mine was... See, impressed. No, nah, you could still see your pectoral muscle, you. but you really, you really don't correct that through working chest, though. On that, how note, do you do it? You correct that through, you know, the core, like the, yeah. you got core muscles that go all the way up to the top under the chest. When you tighten those up, the chest will sit up how it's supposed to. Now you're been a very big motivation for men for coming forth about the breast situation and the move situation, and a lot of times, a lot of us look to you to uplift us in the moments where we don't want to attend the gym. So if I'm going through one of those moments and I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to go to the gym, but what would Kevin Gates tell me? You don't want to go to the gym? If I tell him, say I'm lazy, I don't feel like going to the gym, but I'm thinking to myself, what would Kevin Gates want me to do? What would Kevin Gates say to motivate me to go to the gym? Self-discipline, self, um, self-restraint equals self-respect, and self-respect equals self-confidence. So if you show me a man that say I'm disciplined, I'm going to show you my discipline right now based on just looking at my body. I'm going to show you, you can see my yeah. discipline when I walk in the room because I am the message that I bring. That's why I would never subscribe to a fat motivational speaker because I've been fat before. You just talk good as a bitch. It's the, like giving your money to someone who's broke and saying, can you invest it? You can't, can't I nobody. I mean, it's the same thing. A person that's not empowering themselves cannot empower me. Do you think that's some why people I might love, find that I offensive? Love, my favorite motivational speaker right now is Wes Watson. I love him because the only thing that he preach about is habits, 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 habits. And I'm big on habits. Habits and discipline. Those are the two tricks. You have to sacrifice your old life for your new life. Mm. Do you ever feel, do you ever find it difficult? Are there some days that you find no, it difficult? I love this. You're like, I, want, I sleep this is better. What I want to be at. I sleep better. I look better. I make more money. I fuck better. I do everything better. Everything is better. Everything is 100% better. Why would I trade this for the old life? That's why it's a ceremony. It's a celebration. I'm celebrating myself. I, I, I learned to love the stranger that was once myself. Like, when I take my shirt off, my woman look at me with admiration. All of this frustration that he took and he put it in and made itself a god. Now, I got a question. Just us being honest. You think your woman look at you like that? Do you want her to? I, I don't have a woman, but yes, no. If you had a woman, would you want her to yes, look at you like yes, that? Yes, of course. Dude, yes. Then it's time to start setting a foundation. Even if you walk in the gym and walk out the gym, guess what? You still win. That's discipline. You already made. You That's already see. I'm not going to run to a wall. Like, no. like, like somebody, like a, a, if I take you to the gym and make you do like 20 pull-ups or I, I force you to overexert your, yourself, you're not going to work for the rest of the week. You saw. But if you go in there and do one push-up, then you come back the next day and do two. Then the next day and do three. You've been, get, you've been putting in work the whole week. The slower you go, the further you get. Anything fast don't last. So I'm not here, to, I'm not here to tell you, get in there and do it. I'm not going to motivate you like that. Just do what you can. Hell yeah. Just do what you can because just you showing up, you showed up for yourself. You're not showing up for me. You showed up for you. Can't wait to show you the progress picks in a couple eight. Six I can't wait months. to play this on there. I, I, I want to ask you some questions because I, I, I we talked before. Ask me anything. I want you uh, growing up in Louisiana. I'm really lot. having fun. I ain't gonna lie though, Mama. But we can stop whenever you want to. Yeah. But I'm really having fun. Sorry, I'm a pit bull with the I know. <laughs> I know. It's good, Alvina. It's good. All right. Yes. Yes. But growing up in Louisiana, there's a lot of really talented people that come out of Louisiana, like and Baton Rouge in particular. Yeah. How, how how it's like two hundred thousand people, two hundred fifty thousand people. Like how do you have Boosie, Webby, yourself, Fredo, like, like NBA, yes. NBA because, young boy? You oh, want the you want the, the I want you, I want the, you want the original answer. Or you want the long version. I want or the, the long version because we are the Native Americans, and creativity is in our DNA. It comes from our ancestors. That's why we so creative. We such a creative people. We are native to this land. That's why they call it the red stick. Like all of all of us are just different tribes of Native Americans. You know, we are the copper color people of this land. This is our land. So creativity thrives in us. We are. It's, that, that it's in our DNA. It's in our DNA. And so that that's it's just it's no it's no other way. like I could say, yeah, you know, I cultivated these kids. Fuck all that. I was born I was born gifted. I got in my own way. 
I'm big on accountability. I was born gifted, but I got in my own way. Every time I you, went to jail, yeah, I, say, I deserved to go to because I wasn't living right. Because you, because when you first started, God, you started you. with, uh, like, you were with Boosie and Webby and them, right? Did, were you on Trill Entertainment? They older than me. But, yeah, they're older than you. But did you do? No, you, no they you, older than me. There's two different genres. There's two different, okay. I mean, not two different genres. That's two, two different, different, like, different decades. No, er, eras, like, two yeah. different eras. Yeah, I'm like, a, I'm like a baby up under them. So you're in between them and Young Boy. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm like the... The wave after that. Well, I'm glad you said that about accountability because I had an argument with an interview. I, I had an interview. I'm not going to put his name out there, but he tried to say to me, and I, maybe I look a certain way or something. Maybe he doesn't understand. I come from humble beginnings. I was I was raised in a small town, very poor. Um, maybe he thought, I don't know what he thought, but he tried to say that hip hop made people do bad things. And, that, and I said, no, sir. I said, when I listen to it, it reminds me of what I grew up with and how I grew up and where I come from. And you're not going to blame that on a person's decisions. That's what we do in this country. We blame everybody instead of being accountable. You said you held yourself accountable, and I appreciate now I hold that. myself accountable. Me too. But you could be impressionable as a child. Thank you. You can. You can be impressionable. You can. And you can be impressionable right. and be you're influenced. Right. You're right. Because, like... Like right now, like him right here, he got the heart of a tiger. Both of them fearless. Both of them, but he got the heart of a tiger. If I put a switch in his hand right now and tell him, come on, let's go get active, he's going to do it because he's impressionable right now. He going to do what he see. He going to do what he see and he going to repeat what he hear. That's what he going to do because he's impressionable. Well, not where he really wise. He is on man now because I talk to him <laughs> and I coach him. Like I coach him about making his bed, hygiene, and accountability. Right. But I take self accountability. But it's a lot of people that don't have nobody to raise them. So a lot of the things that they look to is artists and Do the music. Do you think artists have a responsibility then to speak a certain way and act a certain way just in case they might no, have a negative? I don't. I don't think so because they're a reflection of what's going on in their environment. Exactly. They're a reflection of the harsh reality and harsh truths. Like our women are raped every day. Our mothers are on drugs. Our mothers are escorts, and and they are not evil people. They are just the face of the decisions that they made. They are just the face of their circumstances. They're a product of their environment. We can't really say a product of their environment because the environment could be a beautiful environment. It's designed to keep them like that. I know a lot of people don't like to see it, well, I but it's designed it. to. I believe it. It's designed to keep them like that. It's a trap. It's a maze. So it's what makes it so beautiful, though, is that if you could see the maze and see the trap and you could overcome it for yourself. See, I got to put my oxygen mask on if the plane about to crash. I got to put my oxygen mask on first, then help and aid and assist others. I can't worry about what's going on around me. It's chaos. But I got to make sure my oxygen mask on first, then aid and assist someone else. So if I could promote positivity and look for the silver lining in every brown cloud, and still maintain this type of cognitive cognitivity mentally, like analyze all of my thoughts, have emotional intelligence. Man, you superior to anything. There's nothing you can't go through. I believe that. Nah, it. another two-year-old, three-year-old child that ain't had the upbringing that I had. Or doesn't have anybody. Yeah, you know, he going to look to rappers. He gonna, they got people, children that walk up to me and tell me every day, man, you changed my life. I look at you like my daddy. Because I only promoted one, one thing was God and family. Since my career, y'all say y'all knew me ten saying. years ago. Mm -hmm. All I promoted was God and my family. Same That's it. I'm very antisocial. Yeah. I've been in every, I've been in every facility from juvenile to adult jail. Like I'm not supposed to be here right now. But even with the uh, organization that I involve myself in, we combat suicidal thinking, suicide attempts. We combat bullying. We combat depression. What do we do it through? Raising our frequency. And I do that through fitness. Once your chakras are aligned, you don't have no, you're not off balance. You're balanced. Would you consider yourself religious or spiritual or both? Religion is bullshit. There's only one God. Just the rituals are different. I respect everybody's religion or whatever it is. Why is there a lack of respect from other religions? Why does everybody feel I like they have to be right? I can't answer about everybody. I can answer for me, though. I can't take accountability for all them people you talking about. But for me, I don't have no lack of respect for other people's religion. I, like my mother, she Catholic, practiced Santeria, all of that. 
my like I know curanderas. They like good women, mm-hmm. like from Mexico. Where you yep, from? I know. But my grandma that, had a sign on her door that said, "If you're not Catholic, you couldn't go inside." The way that they treat me, I go off of that. I got people that's my same religion that treat me horrible. Don't even like to look at me. Racist toward me. So I don't go off of that. It's only two type of people on earth. It's real people and fake people. Real people do real things. Fake people do fake things. That's how I determine what type of person you are. Like, I'm not condescending. I'm not none of that. But I do take accountability, and I'm very harsh and very firm with myself. Because if I'm not firm with myself and I don't beat myself up, the world will. The world is a very cruel place, but it also can be a very beautiful place if you allow it to be with the proper mindset and perspective. Once we change our perspective, that's when miracles happen. So I got to be hard on myself. Like, I got to. Do you pay attention to world issues? Do things bother you? No, I don't give a fuck about none of that shit, to be honest. You just have to take care of yourself, your family. It's not that because, I'm going to be honest with you, once I change myself, I change the universe and the world around me. I don't worry about I don't watch the news. I don't watch things that's designed to keep me in fear because I don't operate out of fear. I operate out of love. What's going on? We looking at, oh, my God, they, they bombing people today. Shit, what's going to happen? Just because I know about it. When I walk outside, I'm still going to die. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Like, either you're going to live or you're going to die. I choose to live, and I'm enjoying my life while I'm alive. Yeah. I don't care right. about what other people message. got going on. Yeah. I don't. Like, I love my life. It's I, beautiful. I always say you turn off the TV and don't look at your phone. You walk outside and everything's It's a be beautiful right. day. You beautiful engage day. with the world. Day. You have to engage with the world. Like comparison is the killer of all joy. That's why I got off social media for like a year and a half. Because you look at everybody's highlight reel and you're comparing it to your own life. And that breeds depression. Yep. And desire is a lower vibrational frequency than anger. It kills wanting, your happiness. Wanting what other people have. Desire is a lower vibrational frequency. If you look at a frequency chart, let's talk about let's talk about your show. Uh, what you got coming up? What what you got coming up after this? I got a, I comes? got an amazing um, piece of work about to come out called the ceremony. People can get it if they want it. If they don't want it, don't get it. Oh come on! But it, you know, I'm dead serious because what's meant to be will be. be. I live by the universal law, and universal law governs all events. Well, I saw a lot of fans out there jumping up and down. Um, loving everything you were doing, so obviously the energy is good, and you're going to be good yeah, for a very, pr- very long time. You got to promote positivity. I yeah. think so. I think so. You, I mean, you're up there. What you said, like you, you praise God while you were up there. You did all of that while you were performing, and your fans loved every second of it. The energy from beginning to end was incredible. Thank you for coming in here too, because it's late. I don't. For anybody watching this, <laughs> it is a it's whole one day. In the morning. It's one a.m. <laughs> how you do anything is how you do everything. Yes. This was important to me. That's why I did this. And it's important. It. It's the it's the things that you think don't count or the things that really count the most. And this was a beautiful conversation because I haven't even had a conversation like this in a long time. It was really kind of refreshing, to be honest with you. I'm telling you, every time we've ever talked, it's always been like this. It was refreshing. It like yeah. I'm, Automatic I'm always tells me. He's like, I've Man. done a lot of interviews, and you're always in my top three interviews. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. At least somebody cares. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What's your message to your fans? Because we're going to wrap it up, but I really want you um, to deliver a message to your fans. Shit, I just gave them a lot of messages. I'm going to say accountability. I, I say anything. Discipline. My favorite is anything lost could be found again except for time wasted. And my favorite motivational quote was by Inky Johnson. He said, when you work hard for something, you develop a different type of attachment to it. And a person will have a cold day in hell before they try to take it from you. We live by this. We die by this. We don't surrender. We don't retreat. Every man must search his own soul. And every day I search my own soul. Every day. I'm leaving this interview a whole different person. I'm telling you. Kevin Gates. Thank you.